Um, so we played a matinee performance today, and I watched it, and I didn't make a video right after because I was in a little sassy mood. Uh, but the UFC just ended, and I wanted to, you know, obviously the point of this channel, uh, hockey, soccer, and fighting, is to do a game-by-game -game recap of the New York Rangers until we win the Stanley Cup. So consistency is key. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is I have this theory that uh, in about three years, two and a half years, uh, a certain player who played in today's game is going to get a little sick of his current franchise, and they're going to ship him to a team that's going to win the Stanley Cup. New York Rangers, right here. That's Connor McDavid. I had this theory that Connor's going to that Connor's coming home, and he's going to be he's going to be the one that brings uh, these New York Rangers to uh, to the Stanley Cup glory here. Cross McDavid theory off my list. Uh, now. The next thing I want to talk about is there's this podcast I listen to, and there's two Ranger podcasts that I like will listen to once in a while. I don't listen to too much anymore, um, but the first one has like this. The one guy is just like this Jewish like I've never seen him in person, but he's like this like portly fellow. Like I've this is how I imagine him, this like portly gluttonous fellow. Like that's just kind of his personality, like a portly gluttonous person, and. I just like hate this guy's voice so much. <laughs> and then the then his counterpart is like off selling t-shirts or something about like something like he's going on this whole theme of like Capo Caco, the the Church of Caco, like referencing Capo Caco to like the Lord and Savior or whatever. Let me tell you the last thing the Rangers need. Finally, when we got something going we create this sacrilegious t-shirt sale referring to one of our youngest elite players as the Lord and Savior. Like, just, I could very much do without that. Uh, whether or not you believe in Christ or not, just, let's just get that out. Like, we don't need that type of spite happening with the Rangers. I just, I really don't want that. Uh, all right. Portly Jewish man, Church of Kako. Now, some guy on Reddit said... If the New York Rangers are not selling Cupo Coco at the concession stands, then someone missed the missed the ball. Uh, can someone please let me know if they are selling Cupo Coco? I plan on I go at least once a year, uh, and I will have to check that out. But Cupo Coco. Now the big story of the day is it was nice to see Capo Caco actually uh, score his first goal. He was starting to be on my radar as something I wanted to talk about. Like, you know, let's get going here. Like, you know, you got this this hype around you. This is the new NHL. Uh, let's let's get going. You know, let's start putting some points on the board. Start making some plays here. Uh, and he did today. It was a fantastic little seam pass. Um, put the, put the guy in his back hip, controlled him. And uh, buried, buried a goal. That's exactly what you want to see from uh, from this young power forward. Um, nice. Hopefully he stays a Ranger for a long time. And that was the day that a lot of us will remember when we're older. Capo Caco scoring his first goal. Um, I can't speak on every single power play. Uh, I turned it on in the first, like, it was like 15 minutes or something. And I did mark down that the power play was good. We didn't get a goal today, I don't believe, on the power play. But those seam passes, I think Zabinajad had a backdoor pass uh, and should have had a goal on the power play. You're not going to score every time, but it's important to have a power play where you're threatening to score every single time. Um, and it, you're not going to score every single time. It's a, it's a mathematics thing, but I like the power play. I, I, I am continuing to like the power play, and that, that's a good sign. Power play. Buch Nevich on the power play. Power play one with uh, with Capo or no 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 Zabinijad and Artemi Panarin. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like Buch Nevich. I think he fits. I think he's a perfect ugly duckling third filling, kind of like Vlad Nemestikov was down in Tampa with uh, Stammer and uh, and Kucherov. Do we don't. Do we need to force him on the power play? Like, is he that good? 
I'm not sold on this guy. I feel like you could find... And, like, where are you going to play him? Like, obviously, you have Artemi Panarin is playing that hash mark, right? And then up on the top, you got, like, Truba or something. And then let's say you got Zabinijad over here. Like, are you just... And you're playing one defenseman? Like, are... I don't know. They weren't playing one defenseman at the time, but, like, I'm not a big fan of Buchnevich, uh, specifically where you need to, like, make quick decisions with the puck. Like, he kind of, he kind of, like, seems like he holds on to the puck a little bit. And he doesn't have, like, the skill and the elusiveness of Panarin to really make it work. And it's just, like, not a good fit for me on the power play. Like, being, like, right, the guy in the corner, like, right next to the net, like, taking the pass and feeding the one-timer to the guy in the slot. I just, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's just, I know, I know these guys are, uh, you know, tinkering with their lineups and stuff. But it's just not something I'm really, I, I want to see moving forward. Let's have a power play unit. Let's get top skill guys out there. The best players, put them on the ice. Uh, now, Greg McKegg. Uh, Greg McKegg is, I am not convinced that we didn't sign Greg McKegg to sell jerseys. Uh, John Davidson and uh, Jeff Gordon like must have had some sort of glint in their eye when they, they signed this guy. Like I know he's a capable forward, but like, there's going to be a lot of people that are buying Greg McKegg jerseys that uh, would have not bought, uh, I don't know, like Tanner Glass jerseys or like some other fourth liner. I'm not. I don't hate the decision. As a matter of fact, I didn't write him down for that. I uh, I kind of like the way he was buzzing into the zone there. He was beating guys down to the corner for pucks. You need guys like that. Like in today's NHL, you need four lines that can go. Um, and I, listen, I, I just like the guy. I like the movement. I like I like him moving the legs. I know it's the first game, but I'm pretty sure it's his first game. Uh, I, I didn't hate his performance. Uh, fantastic, you know, nice little fourth line guy. I thought Hank played well. Um, everyone who has watched the Rangers for a little while knows that Hank's a slow starter, and just played pretty well. Uh, very, and he seems focused, like, man, I really want to get Hank a cup. I know it's, like, a ridiculous thing, but I don't know. I have high hopes for this team. Hopefully this year or something next year we can, you know, hey, make a run. Why why not us? That's right. Pittsburgh, they get old. Malkin's got some sort of degenerative muscle disease or something. Why not us? Uh, Hank is ready. Now, Brendan Lemieux. Um... I haven't seen him play well in three games, and if someone has seen him play well, then I, I would be happy to have you um, I would be happy to have you um, tell me why you think that. He, he held out for $900,000 or one year deal or something. I don't know what, exactly what it was, but he held out for a one year deal. He missed a little training camp. You got to come and play, man. Like, you, you got to, like, throw a hit, cause some ruckus, like, you know, take a penalty or something, like, take a, a good penalty. You got to be a difference maker. Like, you're holding out. You missed training camp. Show your worth. Like, you're not going to get on the fans' good side. With, with, with You got to get your bucket on the ice. Like, you got to let that, you got to let that afro. You got to show the fans the afro. You got to mix it up. You got to do something. Like I, he's he. I haven't loved his game yet so far this year. I'm hoping it's improving, but uh, not not yet. Um, James Neal, he's got five power play goals this year, and what is it seven on the year? Like they traded Lucic for Neal and Calgary. Cal Calgary. Uh, it didn't work out. It was kind of like uh, it was kind of like uh, you know. Things aren't working out here. Your guys aren't working out. Let's try something new. Um, and this is like like five years ago. I kept like I kind of just like like guys who are like power play guys. Like plus minus is an interesting stat. Like five years ago, and I had this theory like you know what I want to know how good you are at even strength because there, it, to me it's like there's two different games. It's like even strength and then power play. They're two completely different skill sets. And, like, James Neal, 5-on-5, five five, 
like is an example of that player is like is he a different not really like but on the power play like you know they, they, you can make him do well with playing with Connor McDavid but there is that separation of of games it's a whole different game and it's so important to score in the power play where I find like you have a lot of these guys are so good on the power play but like five on five they're not really that good um James Neal might have some success this year but five on five I can't imagine any sort of any sort of any sort of productivity five on five from James Neal the real deal Neal Kreider beginning now when the Rangers first got good um Chris Kreider, or, like, I would watch the games with my dad, and my dad would basically be like, the Rangers suck. Like, the, the other team is having to puck all the time. And I'm just like, shut up, Dad. And Chris Kreider, like, that, that went on for, like, five years. <laughs> and he was always right, because the Rangers always sucked. Um, and then, even when they were good, like, we played that collapsing style where it's like, here, we're just going to, like, Callahan's going to, like, block shots. Dan Girardi's just going to block shots. You're not going to score on us, and we might get a goal. Uh, that's the game we played. Chris Kreider was the first person, first player to come on to the Rangers that uh, that my dad was like, this guy can play. And I, I haven't noticed, like, every once in a while, like, it's almost once every game, um, Excuse me. Uh, it's almost like once every game. Excuse me. Um, it's almost like once every game you kind of notice like those power strides of the guy driving wide, and uh, and I mean, it's it kind of it, it's a little sad for me because uh, Kreider is that first guy that like my dad was like this guy doesn't suck like this guy's moving his legs driving and he was correct. And I don't know what's going to happen with him this year. It sounds like we're going to trade him at the deadline. And I will be the first person at Dick's trying to get that $50 jersey like I did with Zook. Kreider's like one of the cool, like I really want a Kreider jersey. Um, but I would like to see him start playing well because if we're trading him, I would like to get at least a first round draft pick for him. Um, now we got Adam Fox back there at the blue line. Uh, you kind of notice him dipsy doodling and messing around with the puck. And I kind of think that in today's game, you need those guys. Um, look at like Tyson Berry, just just dang like just dangling like by a couple guys. Like you kind of need uh, who's that guy out in uh, um, the guy uh, Cal Mar Cal Maker, I think, who came in last year, who is just kind of like skates in the zone and like deeks guys and like skates and controls the puck and skates and by guys with the puck. And, like, I'm kind of seeing a little bit of that with Adam Fox where he's making risky plays. But I kind of just think and he's not having very much success with him. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because I feel like every team really needs that, like, real playmaking high-risk defenseman. I'm not, like, I don't have the analytics to back it up. But it's just, like, you need a, you need a guy like that, like a, a real risk-taker back there that can just, like, make a spectacular play, like beat a guy. And now going in on the break and I, I neutral zone, like control the puck in neutral zone, make sharp turns and like see the ice well. And every once in a while, he'll just have the puck stolen from him and the other team will go in and score on a breakaway once in a while. But I, that seems to me like kind of what Adam Fox is doing is he's kind of like getting his bearings and he's going to be that player for us. Um, so I'm interested. I'm happy with it. He's definitely made some mistakes, but I, I'm happy with the way that Adam Fox's game has progressed. Um, listen, anytime Wayne Gretzky's at the, at the, uh, at the, in the garden here, he's getting the spot on the run down here, right over here. Let me show you. So right here, my buddy painted a. Uh, Gretzky's iconic goodbye with oil paints, uh, a Greek guy, and he painted this for me, uh, and this is why I like the Rangers, and anytime Gretzky is, uh, anytime Gretzky's at the Garden, I'm going to notice it. This up here is the 1997 home opener when we signed Pat LaFontaine, I forget who else was on that team, but we played the Islanders, sat in one of those suites that I had a buffet when I was a kid, 
uh, pretty cool. The other one, two tickets. Um, anyways, we are going to uh, hopefully see you next game, and uh, we'll talk about the Rangers, and let me know if you guys agree or disagree with my opinions.